such an asshole. So, um, the more and more I was doing the research to answer this question, the more I realized this is a hell of a question. Uh, because this is really a question facing a lot of people and be increasingly facing people. So this existential question of uh, a small, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very clear about this. I'm not mincing or using the wrong words. A small minority of people who can only be defined as superior, who by the sole fact they wish to make their life count, they face a huge problem where the rest of the population insists on being not inferior, except obviously by relation to the superior people, but inferior people are because in being normal. And so normal and so conformist that, again, it makes me debate whether these people are even alive. I mean, I know you're alive. I think you're sentient. But oh, did you watch Breaking Bad or the Pointy Hair Show, the Throne Game Show? No, I did. I did something with my life and sat in there watching TV. Uh, so this guy has a really good question. Because he's pushed my thinking beyond what I've already written about. So link down below are two items that would be germane resources to this one. The menu, life without the opposite sex. This is obviously in the context of women generally, generally, I know, not, not all women. I know. I, I got the pat on the, okay, you know, go away now. On the general trend of women having a, a decreasing or zero interest in family formation, which was given us entire point purpose in existence but what if society just abandons any pursuit of I'd, I'd be ecstatic if humanity decided to pursue excellence i'm going just i'll be happy if you just choose fun huh how about a little fun the swingy rope over on the rapid creek how many of you gonna go up the swingy rope not a single one of you so the men you kind of uh, covers a lot of the topics that we're talking about where if whether you are rejected by the opposite sex, male or female. But more importantly, you kind of open my eyes a little bit. What if you're just not necessarily ostracized or rejected by society, but you're like, man, society sucks. You got, you do. It's not an opinion. You all suck. You're, you're all the same. You suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. And I don't want to be part of your team no more. <clears throat> I want to go and do my thing. Before I die, you're going to die. And so that that's a good starting point for you guys trying to figure out, okay, well, what do I do if there's not opposite sex, not a spouse, husband, or wife in my life? But, man, what what if you want nothing to do with society? And yeah, So that that's one resource. And the other thing uh, is minimalism, which is a prerequisite life philosophy skill operating system, whatever you want to call it. You, you need to be a minimalist so that you have the, because here's here big secret. Okay. One of the main reasons people are stuck in normie world is because they fell for the materialism. They got duped into buying things they can't afford and it's debt and debt enslaves you and limits your abilities to go out and live life. The only reason, well, okay, many reasons, but one of the main reasons I could go to the swinging rope anytime I want and swing into the Rapid Creek uh, is because I don't have debts. I have true freedom. And, and the norms would be, oh, 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 especially out here. <laughs> oh, my God. Small penis truck owners come to Rapid City. Holy God. I got my old piece of crap. 19-year-old Chevy Silverado. And every time I go park, it's next to the Ford F-150, souped up, duped up. They're, they're, the, the trucks are becoming a full story tall now. Oh, you don't need to get your pickup truck. I got a Ram, double Dodge, diesel, hemi, gooby, bloobity, blabbity, boo, strap-on, penis extender truck. Yeah, you also got 80 grand in debt at 7.5% interest rate. That's why most people are not going to be able to join you or even have this option is because they are stuck as a slave to their debts. So it, for those of you that kept your financial balance sheet pr pretty clean and void of liabilities and debt, 
you now have this freedom. But if you would like to get to this point where like, I don't have to do what society tells me. I don't have to get patches required, masters preferred to pay for the mansion. I bought my wife who's going to divorce me and take me for half. And now I got to pay for children. Alamo. Sorry for you guys. All right. But to even have this option, you can't have any debt. And so if you're having trouble with spending and you got this compunction linked also below, just open it up. Just I should just keep it open all the time, but this thing is germane. On my minimalism of course, it is $450. Don't you be giving me no crap. The average car payment is $700 a month. Shut the F up. The only reason I charge that much, well, is because I'm greedy and I want more money. But the main reason is so that you actually pay the F attention this time. Don't give me, well, click on minimally, you mean 500 plus change with sales tax because you Democrats like always having to tax things. And why, why is the cost of living so high? Gee, don't know. What's going on here for economics? So let's go through the guy's question. Great question. Um, <clears throat> and it's short. I highly appreciate your wisdom, read most of your books, and listened to a lot of podcasts. And as long as a person constantly seeks knowledge and develops his paradigm of thinking, I want to know, aside from the advice is a curse of the high IQ and the menu. Got to drink the coffee while it's hot. Got my Dankin' Donuts here. <clears throat> Can you describe in details pursuit of intellectual excellence and novelty for a misanthrope Nihilist hedonist without involving other people in the equation. Simply adequate skeptic human doing that you see yourself and about whom you write in your books. I would be grateful for books, podcasts, and any other form of information related to this topic, your personal recommendations, and anything you mentioned. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get to some podcasts and all that. Um, oh, I should have linked to the Way of Monkey book. Oh, even before you get anything that I write about, please go get the Way of Monkey book. By Turt Flinging Monkey. That would be a good one. As for podcasts, I don't, I'm going down my own path of stoicism and minimalism and all that. So I kind of figured all that out. So the podcasts I consume are more for intellectual stimulation. But we'll get to it. So um, here's, here's a group, here's a list of things that should give your life value and purpose outside of opposite people and that I have not already listed in the menu and other writings and books, though the menu is obviously it's the menu is the most comprehensive list. And I'm going to go through a couple that I also do list in the menu because I think they're that important. So for those of you that are here new and haven't read the books, at least you got these to chew on. All right. First, I think what is the most important thing to do in life not because it's necessarily going to give you a purpose, but the pursuit of this is. Uh, but more importantly, it will lay the foundation for you to enjoy the rest of your life long term is global reconnaissance. And by I mean global reconnaissance, I don't mean eat, pray, love, go to the tourist spots, go to Ibiza, part, you know, don't don't tour, don't do global travel like a girl. Why I mean global travel is like you're cane and you walk the world. And you and maybe not walk because that's very inefficient, <clears throat> but you find out the culture, the village that you belong to. And this is a long journey. Now, maybe you're lucky. You get off the plane in wherever, uh, Phuket, you go to the little thatch village place, and you just like, oh my God, I didn't know a place like this existed. And this is okay. So, you know, it's it's like finding a girl where Usually that's a, a decade long process of serious hard dating and courtship, but it could be, you know, you meet the girl love at first sight, your high school sweethearts, and you're married for 78 years when you both die at the same time, still having sex into your eighties or nineties or whatever. I mean, it happens, uh, but it's, it, it is going to be on average. I estimate a decade long process. That, that decade-long process will give you something to do. You'll be enriched. You'll enjoy. Of course, in order to do this, you need the finances to do it. The most direct path of which is minimalism. And I'll plan. Lisa needs braces. Minimalism. Link below. Uh, but that is what I think you need to do. 
Um, and as the West becomes more and more anti-human, anti-love, and more politics, more materialism, more um, tradism, and and myself, me, me, me. Ooh, I, I mean, I remember. Give you an example. There's a girl on Twitter. She graduated from the Carlson School of Management. Her Twitter was, this POC is graduating with her degree. This future boss bitch or whatever like that. And it, it shows you that it everyone is on themselves and how amazing they are because of traits they were. POC means person of color. Um, <clears throat> that That's your value. That's what you're bringing to this culture. It's, that's what you're bringing to the world. And so uh, th that, among many other reasons, is like you just want to get the hell out of the West and find a place you belong. Not that they're celebrating you like Kane from Firefly. Not they're going to put a statue of your name up. There's that nice little hut in that Croatian village, and they celebrate Borscht Fest. And there's this nice, maybe cute girl that you saw at the city folk dance, and she was giving you the eye, and you're like, oh, maybe that might make a family. All right. But that's why I'm saying finding your village. Find the culture that you belong in. History. History is, um, if you don't believe in the afterlife, history is all we got. And thank God, starting with the Mesopotamians, we started recording it. And there is a ton of history. And all history is is the big, longest-running movie in the world. It's the only movie in the world. And given how Hollywood is just take story from 30, 50, 70 years ago, told a million times over, but add vagina and minority color people, switch out, swap out thing, add woke message. I mean, there, there's no intellectual stimulation there. And if you're looking for something to entertain your mind and hear a very interesting story, there are so many podcasts about every possible facet of, of human history. Going back to act the beginnings of human history with the clay tablets, the Egyptian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, the Hittite Empire, <clears throat> the Incans, Aztecs, Mesoamericans, the colonial days, the world. How many wars do you want to study? Uh, Ancient Warfare History Podcast is a great podcast. And not just what happened, but why did it happen? What were the you know what were the weapons like? It you don't have the life expectancy to consume everything that happened in in humankind, but you could sure make a shot trying, <clears throat> and that's much more interesting than watching any movie that's ma being made today or being made in the future. I might watch the Minions movie because it doesn't look like woke piece of trash. All right, uh, but the podcasts just uh, history. You you could what what movie would you like? Napoleon, Bismarck, the guy with the funny mustache, the other guy with the funny bigger mustache that killed a lot more people in peacetime than he ever did in war. What do you want? <clears throat> the guy who killed people with glasses? What do you want? <laughs> and so I would I would just binge on history. A lot of people. I don't like the podcast. I try to listen to Dan Carlin's hardcore history. I just couldn't get into it, but that's a very popular one. So I'm going to assume that will be more um, appealable to the masses. But uh, <clears throat> any history podcast that you want. Uh, somewhat closely related only in so far as their podcast, I would do philosophy podcasts. Because whether you're aware of it or not, you've been programmed by society to have a certain operating system. And depending on how influential your parents are and how much quality and caliber they were, your operating system is going to vary in terms of how effective it is in operating in the real world. <clears throat> and also coming up with a value system that will reward you correctly for the right values that you will derive contentment, not happiness, because happiness is not possible. Contentment um, is all heavily dependent upon that. Are you a victimhood mentality? You're never going to be happy. You're never going to be content. It's always whatever. The Jews, the white males, the men, their fault. Patriarchy. So philosophy, real philosophy, not, not academic social science, you know, Marxist philosophy, which is just warping the real world to, to give you self-entitlement. But your Stoics, your uh, hedonists, um, <clears throat> and more modernly, as a this is where 
the way of monkey book I say is a vital thing to go and buy and read, but Ben John philosophy podcast, Stefan Molyneux, uh, though top talks about different podcasts, but the whole point of going into philosophy is that nearly everyone needs a new operating system on the way they think because they are programmed wrong. They're programmed to love things and socialism and value traits they were born with above other people, <clears throat> above efficacy, about, above efficiency, and above reality. However, even if you did have good parents and you came from a good background and your operating system is pretty good and you've had some pretty good success with it, usually there's drastic room for improvement and that will drastically improve your life as well. And so I would say, in addition with history, which is going to teach you some philosophies through empiricism, like what did humans do? Oh, they tried socialism again and people starved again. Ah. But um, when you get into philosophy, you will at minimum improve your operating system. Ideally, especially if you have a bad one, only if you have a bad one, completely replace it with a, a real one that works. And so I think philosophy is, and it also helps you reconcile with your mortality and you being finite. And so I found a lot of solstice and intellectual, a uh, solace, sorry, not solstice, solace and intellectual stimulation and philo uh, philosophy podcasts. And after a while, you're going to get it and you're like, okay, now I got my new operating system. Now it's time to apply it in the real world and then you move on. Um, Beauty. That was not in any of the books. Uh. And only came in so far of this as I knew I had to um, decorate <clears throat> my new house. And I've gone from a one-bedroom apartment pretty much my entire life to now a, not a huge house, it's, you know, 1,300 square feet cabin, really. But there's a lot more rooms than I had art. So I had to sit and think, okay, I'm going to be here all the time. I want to see things that are nice and pleasing to me. I spent a lot of time investing in this, uh, not not in terms of money or framing things, but but I went through, this is a lot, of, think about how much work this is, <clears throat> but it's worth it. I went through all my computer hard drives, the external ones, the thumb drives and everything, got all my pictures I've taken since the digital camera days, and I selected the top like 10 pictures of the literally thousands, maybe tens of thousands of pictures that I had. I went furthermore, because think about it, it's art, all these pictures, you're gonna see them. I put all my pictures on one large thumb drive, plugged into the back of the TV, hit random play so that it's constantly playing like a piece of art. <clears throat> so I could see all the family, friends, all my memories on that. Whereas most of you girls, you wouldn't even know how to, you know, take the pictures off your phone, you're not going to look at it because you take a billion pictures of food and yourselves and selfies and girls that you're going to hate next week. And there's not going to be no memory there. And you won't have the life expectancy to go through it. I that That is a tremendous amount of investment in time to see that. I also talked about my uh, fossil collection where I had to pick the right credenza. I had to assemble the credenza. And then I had to go through all of my fossils say, which ones are the keepers? <clears throat> which ones do I display? And which ones do I give to the little kids? And that was a three-day pro project to finally have my fossils displayed and see that. Then, the, then, then that's not even the artwork. Then there was the artwork. What am I going to print off? Well, I mean, you guys can kind of see. I got some mementos and all that. What's the best? I had to put the soundproofing up and all that. You guys see, obviously, like Snoopy and Cowboy Bebop. <clears throat> But it has been absolutely worth it because, and I always had stuff up I liked in my apartments, of course, but they were more like, okay, what's in this box? Throw it up and I sleep at home. Pursuing beauty, once you do your global reconnaissance and find out your village where you belong and you build your little house, your little hut or whatever the residence is, having good taste in art and putting beauty around you is not only very important and only something will give you some kind of existential thing to do. It's going to take time. <laughs> It'll give you something to chew on for a while. And even I'll, I'll, I'll show you how granular this goes. 
So when we're going to get to meditation la later, uh, but Cappy, I dare don't call it PTSD, but after struggle and strife, you, you finally get out of it and you're a little frazzled, shall we say, and there needs to be a decompression time. So I need to calm down. I need to let go of a lot of anger. I need, need to, now I'm not going wooey, 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 chakra crystals and Buddhists, but I wanted to get a wind chime. All right. I spent a good hour and a half going through wind chimes. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just buy whatever? <clears throat> well, you'd think you could go to the store and get that. And I did. So let's just add another hour of time. They don't have wind chimes at Menards. And if they do, you don't have them displayed anywhere for anyone to see. So shut up if you do have them. Why would you want to physically see a wind chime, Cappy? Why? Because I want to know what it sounds like. I don't want the high pinging ones. I don't want the low gong bell sounding. I wanted to get the right tone. So I spent an hour and a half listening to videos of different chiming bells. And then you look at prices. Oh my God, there's a thing called Corinthian chimes. 250 bucks for, for chimes. I uh, got a lot of other things I could do with 250 bucks. But I want to get the right type of chimes. Wanted to get the right color so that it is pleasing audibly to me. And so there's like, or, and, and then what, let's say you get situated with your physical design of your house. It doesn't even be the house. Just generally, it's going to be your abode because you're going to see it. <clears throat> but what if you got a piece of land? I honestly don't care that much about my land. I'm not, I'm not very particular, but yeah, that's mode. Okay. I got my retaining walls in. It's fine. It's not an eyesore to the neighborhood. Hello. <laughs> my closest neighbor is over a mile away. Um, I got my little pond. It's all fine. Uh, but some, particularly ladies, gardening is a huge thing. And you guys remember Jet from Cowboy Bebop with his bonsai tree? You know, uh, a gardening is, is it's it's a work of beauty, but it's also a meditative kind of relaxing thing. You want to you want to create a thing of beauty. And so I think a lot goes into landscape or even, even guys, I mean, you don't think about it, but mowing a really good yard and getting those lines nice and perfect. So it's got that crisscross pattern, like a baseball diamond. <clears throat> that's, that's another form of beauty. It could be fashion. It could be actually you painting art, whatever it is, surround yourself with beauty. And since you only have a limited amount of space, invest the time in choosing the exact right pieces of art the exact right design of your landscaping, the exact right design of how you want your house to be, the furniture, this or that. I'm not a big feng shui guy. I'll give you, I'll give you a little quick baseball, inside baseball, okay? You start with your colors of the walls and the trim, all right? Then you start on the ground with your furniture because you, traffic is going to determine that. Okay, so, okay, we put the desk here. We put the couch there. Don't put the table over there. People are going to get in the way of it. Well, where should we go? It will logically <clears throat> mean to put, and then that kind of has a logical order to fill it in. Now that you got your furniture and the things on the ground filled in, now you start looking at the walls or things that kind of go above the furniture. Do we want a Tiffany lamp? Do we want a modern lamp? What about a hutch? What about a display? Do I want this Turkish lamp or do I want a minimalist lamp? What do I want to allow crazy lamp? What kind of pictures do we put up? And you slowly fill it in. And then usually you're like, okay, I want a main art piece. Start with that. Where does it go? It goes there. Stop. Put it up. Look around. What else then fills in? And so that's a methodology you can use to kind of optimize the beauty of, of your abode, your domicile, and it'll give you it. it, it I, I threw up the last pictures. Oh, what? Um, two weeks ago. So that's a year and a quarter. And I hustled. I hustled. I got my house up and running. If I was in charge of the Death Star, it would have been fully operational and completely filled in. I know it was totally operated. It would have been painted in Return of the Jedi. Painted. That's how that's how quick I am. But you don't have a degree in project management. You're right, I don't. Uh, <clears throat> vice. Uh, you said hedonistic, and I'm all for vice. Uh, I won't lie. Some of my happiest days were my drinking days. I love nothing more than riding my motorcycle across the country, 
taking off, uh, getting off the main interstate, going to these no-name towns and going to some rink and dink dive bar or the VFW where there's no windows, there's no lights, and I just get myself a cocktail and I sit there and I let that rumblements burn through my stomach and my esophagus is like, oh, good times, good times. And maybe that's more meditative in the sense that I could sit and relax. No one gave a damn who I was. No one cared. They were friendly. Oh, where are you coming from, Twin Cities? Oh, you're far away from home. Yep. Yes, I am. Good riding out there. Nope, it's a little hot, but got to ride when you got to ride. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, that, that's my vice of choice. Uh, you got a sense, and, and then there's, let's kind of define what vice is a little bit. You got senses, you got five senses, five, six senses. Yeah, six senses, the, the one no, people don't have. That was a movie. Uh, you should stimulate them. Now, the problem with vice is that it usually comes with resistance. Novelty burns out. Novelty is eroded away uh, because uh, uh, just the human psychology, but also there's a chemical component. You need a higher and higher hit of booze or drugs or physical drugs to get that high. <clears throat> and if you go, say, to the roller coaster theme parks, okay, roller coasters are great, but you're always going to want bigger, faster, steeper, loopier, and all that. You want to have regular old sex first time you had sex? Whoa, most amazing thing ever. When you get a little bit older, you're like, dude, I want to do some serious effed up stuff. I want to do crazy stuff. <laughs> Ice cream sure is great the first time you taste, but definitely you're going to add some sauce. You're going to add some sprinkles and cherries and peanuts and whatever else. Soon there's going to be more ingredients than there is ice cream. And so that that's the paradox of vice. But I'm all for vice. I'm all for it. Now, hopefully your vice isn't meth or heroin because it's going to ruin your life. But there was, um, and it's in the menu, Life Without the Opposite Six. There's a sub philosophy. It's not hedonism, epicureanism. That's what it is. Epicureanism. It's about the responsible and mature pursuit of hedonism. That you pursue it to its maximum amount possible that it will not then ruin your life. So <clears throat> when you go out with your buddies, you have three drinks, but you Uber at home so you don't drive drunk. As opposed to having 10 drinks, driving home, get a DWI and a massive hangover and, and liver problems later on. Right. That's kind of Epicureanism, which is probably a really good. I haven't studied that much, uh, but that is a responsible way to pursue vice. Um, Vince at Masculine Geeks, he's into the bondage thing, uh, tying girls up and uh, spanking them and doing all sorts of things to that. That's not my cup of tea. I'm not a leather guy. I'm more the frilly, lacy lingerie French maid. Go clean it and go have sex on the kitchen countertop type of guy. Uh, but, you know, no harm, no foul. What you know, melted wax, spanking whips, whatever. Is everyone having a good time? Yeah. And actually, that I don't think there's any drawback on that stuff. You know. Um, what else is generally considered vice? Uh video games. I want to get into escapism later a little bit, <clears throat> but I could see video games, uh, just having a little bit of fun. Um sweets. Food that isn't healthy for you, bacon, smoking, not, not, I guess smoking too, smoking a cigar. Obviously that's a vice for me. I enjoy it very much, but I'm in smoking meats, you know, oh, is, is that really the healthiest for you? No, it isn't Karen. Shut up and get out of here. I almost guarantee you that if you, whatever vice you pursue, if you get rid of your nagging wife or the nagging Karens in your life, you, your net health will go up because nagging is toxic. It's worse than cancer. Nagging kills more people early than, than any form of cancer or disease or virus. <clears throat> so uh, whatever it is that your vice is, and I kind of wrestle with this one where, yeah, I'd like to get my six-pack abs back. I had them at one time. I'd like to look good naked more than I do now. But damn it, man, you need something. You need something. And man, they got some good cookie shops and pastry shops in Rapid City. They got a crumble cookie out here. And that's just one of like three cookie shops. And the ice cream's not too bad. There's some ice cream places that are all right. There's an A&W or two, I think. 
Um, <laughs> there's nothing in Hermosa. <laughs> There's nothing in this gas station. <laughs> um, so whatever your vice is, the trick is to do it guilt-free. I cannot emphasize that enough because now you're just stressing yourself out. You're not enjoying life. If you're going to drink, drink. If you're going to be fat, be fat. Don't worry about the opposite. You've, you're not going to stress yourself about the opposite sex. Ladies, that's a big, big gift I just gave you right there. <clears throat> it's very clear here. I'll help out all of America. It's very clear. Most Americans prefer, prefer gluttony over love. That's fine. Just give up on the love then. Not because you should give up on love. Like you're giving up on love. But no, it's the torture of trying to have both things that you can't. So you're tortured about it. Go be fat, eat, drink, be merry, and don't let love, le the, the, the vain, now the vain and impossible pursuit of love lessen your life. <clears throat> so if you're going to do a vice, do it and do it uh, uh, emphatically and enthusiastically. You want to have sex? You want to get the, the melting candle wax and the whipping of the things? Oh my God, with the whipping of the things, I wonder if, I wonder if uh, Vince Ovet masculinely does the uh, does it in the Jerry Lewis voice. Oh my goodness, with the whips and the chains, Hoyle. That hurts, nice lady. If you're into that, all right, go do it, but do it guilt free. Then you can enjoy your vice. And in an ironic sense, if you enjoy the vice guilt free, you're less likely to be addicted to it. <clears throat> so there is that. Um, next one, real adventures. All right, this is in the book, the menu. So I apologize for repeating, but uh, especially for men, ladies, I don't know. I, I can't speak from a women's perspective. I just got to go with the guy's perspective. You should go on a real adventure. Um, <clears throat> kind of not city slickers, but that times 12. Somebody mentioned the John Muir Trail. It's a 221 mile trail. I never heard of it. Up at the Sierra Nevadas. I think I might just take a crack at that. A lot of people, um, my uncle did the um the Smoky Mountain Trail. I forget when the, the Appalachia Trail. Uh Cappy has gone on some serious adventures. And one of these days, me and Adam Piggott and the great one, you can find both their websites at pushingrubberdownhill.com and sinlibsoch.com, cynical libertarian society.com. Um, we're going to do a river rafting in theory from Rock Springs, Wyoming, all the way down to the Hoover Dam. And, uh, <clears throat> I think men should go on one of those real adventures at least once. Cause like, what would the Lord of the Rings be if everyone just stayed in the Shire? Right. Now you got this real adventure. Now in the olden days, men would have the real adventure in war. Uh, a lot of you guys had it kind of forced on you with the, uh, war against terror. Um, so that, that kind of happens there. But if you don't have it, you need to go on some kind of real adventure. Uh, like a world round the trip. I thought about a round the trip motorcycle ride. I'd have to get one of those. I've become a better mechanic is what I have to do. <clears throat> and then also learn how to ride one of those high off-road kind of ones. So when you go to Russia and they have their crappy roads, you don't get a flat all the time. But um, that that some kind of real adventure. The preparation alone will take a year and then also not just a year of preparation but uh it take a year to figure out what you want to do and you get multiple ones of those you know you know that um all right now we're going to talk about meditation i have three different types of meditation none of which is the wooey wooey wowie woo it might touch a toe into that, but meditation i'm talking things that are a little bit more practical a little bit more type a intense i ain't got time for BS. Go on one with the spirit, man. I mean, like real meditation. Some that's got something at the end of it for you. So I'd say the most important meditation um, is one of, and I wrote down here, the goal of accurately assessing what society is capable of in terms of your pursuit of happiness and the role you should optimally play in an effectively dead society. All right. And that requires sitting down empirically looking at what society is, has become, and will become in the future, <clears throat> digesting that fact, 
and then figuring out, all right, given this playing field, <clears throat> how do I maximize my happiness and contentment within this environment? And that's a hard thing to do because, again, minimalism, I don't, I, I, did I mention how critical and key it is to become a minimalist to do all this? If you are stuck living paycheck to paycheck because you majored in dumb crap, you followed what your teacher said, follow your heart, the money will follow. And you have a worthless degree and you have debt and you like spending money on things and, 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 and you married the wrong person and now you're getting divorced and, and, and <clears throat> this is not an option for you. Every day in your life is I got to make money so I don't fall behind and go to jail or they take away my car. That's your life. So this is not an option for you. But for those of you who have the free time, you manage your money right. You really need to sit down and figure out. You need to, it's strategic planning. That's essentially what it is. I, I guess meditation is one way to call it. It's more effectively strategic planning. Oh, everyone. Let's use the West because that's most of my audience. Everyone is getting fat. Women are not that interested in men. Certainly not the average man. Uh, families are being, we're in a post marriage, post nuclear society, post society family. We're having socialism. People are starting to value their traits more than they are what the production is. Um, I think those are the main and most poignant and germane trends facing the West. What do I do? <clears throat> I can't invest in the pursuit of the opposite sex. People are too ugly and fat to have good sex, let alone families. Half the population doesn't want family. Even the other half, the population, if they want it, they can't afford it because of taxation. What now is on the tail? Again, menu life without the opposite sex. But you got to figure that out yourself because everyone is different. All right, well, what do I want to do? Some of you might want to do round the trip traveling. I, there's that website or that channel where uh, it's two buddies who do riding through China and talk about Chinese politics, which I find very interesting. That, that's different. And it's not for me, but that's different. <clears throat> Modern Life John went to Japan. Uh, some of you just do sex tourism, speaking of vice. Uh, you know, I, I ride my motorcycles and go hiking. But whatever it is, you guys got to figure out what it is that you want to do in the context of what society is going to allow you to do, but especially with the key underlying premise that most of society is not worth interacting with. Absent human interaction. Oh, there'll be humans. There'll be the occasional people. And you are going to have your friends. Uh, but it is effectively you're, you're living in a dead society. All right. So I'll read that again. The goal of accurately assessing what society is capable of in terms of your pursuit of happiness and the role you should optimally play in an effectively dead society. It could be to leave. You know, <clears throat> could be to go to a culture where traditionalism where the opposite sexes kind of like each other and they form families. If you want to form a family, it could be where there's a culture that's very proud of its culture. Uh, I'm trying to think, you know, Asian culture is pretty proud of itself. Not arrogant, just proud. It could be quiet. Leave me the F alone. And you go live up in Northern Canada where there is no culture except self-loathing. Ask more Scandinavians. I think in the self-loathing department, I mean, like if you hate yourself, you can live in Norway, Sweden, or Finland. Oh, go to Minnesota. They really hate themselves there. Go to Minnesota. That's a great place for self-loathing. You hate yourself so much that you want to suffer the pain because you, you're like, well, if I end my life, then I won't suffer any more pain. So I need to stay alive to hate myself more. I introduce to thee Minnesota or Minnesotans. All right, so there you go. Meditation two. If you are here, you have gone through, at minimum, incredible mental, psychological uh, <clears throat> trials and tribulations. You are definitely bucking society. And if you buck what is popular in American society, they come crashing down on you. Whether that's middle school, um, psychopathic children. Or they'll f I, mean, I remember because I had Velcro Walmart. I'll never forget. Hey, guys, for all of you that I had to go to school with, I, I will never forget having to get in fights because I didn't have Nike high tops. I had Walmart Velcro shoes. 
I remember the people. Some of you have children. Hmm. In case something, get somebody decides something. They're just saying some facts here. Uh, that kind of psychopathic, forced, dictatorial theocracy on young people. <clears throat> that you had to be this way or else we're going to fight you because you got shoes. <laughs> Um, society demands you conform. If you don't, they're going to get their pound of flesh for whatever reason. They can't just leave you alone. And, and then you got to go to school. And again, a lot of this has the erroneous operating system you were given in the past, the erroneous operating system that you make decisions that are not based in reality or empiricism. And you pay as, so many of you had to go through college. That was a waste of time. <clears throat> you got worthless degrees or degrees that didn't pay off. I know for nearly all of you, Corporate America, your career didn't go the way it should have, or you were promised it would. And people are like, oh, you're delusional. I expect it. No, no, no. It was a, a mentally ill. Oh, speaking of conformist, I do also remember all my bosses' names. Um, that that was completely not only unfair, but psychopathic and toxic. Now you come out of that <clears throat> bucking the trend. I don't know, saying there's going to be a housing crash when you, when everyone says there's not and they threaten to fire you. I'm just saying. One of my bosses died of natural causes, though, already. So it's like, oh. <clears throat> but it's all right. He was a fat, miserable guy, and his wife was fat and ugly, too. So um, anyway, when you come out of that and you're a minimalist and you don't need money anymore and you're, 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 you don't have to work for a W-2 toxic boomer boss anymore, you're not a slave and you've let go and you're no longer forced to go to an environment like school where you have to tolerate the normies, conformies and inferiors and people are going to fight you because, you know, you didn't, you don't wear a blue shirt on blue shirt day. Um, <clears throat> you're going to have to come down off of the hatred, resentment and anger about just how much society lied to you and attack the individualist. You know, I, I'll give you a perfect example. Let poor people suffer their mistakes. Yeah, you're an islamism and you hate women and the minorities. No, you're just making more poor people and causing more suffering. I'm actually the one who cares. You hate people. We're going to go after your job. <clears throat> you, you might, you might want to like, oh, geez, Putin might launch some nukes. Oh, that'd be just too bad if California fell into the sea. If you have thoughts like this, there might be some anger problems there. And it is your responsibility for the sake of the remainder of your life to be more happy and enjoyable to come off of that anger. Never forgive them. Absolutely never forgive them. Uh, instead, another life philosophy I've found that's very helpful is to enjoy their misery because they essentially live the lie. Their erroneous operating system <clears throat> has damned them to wasting their one and precious life. And so rather than, than seek revenge, holy cow, is vengeance mine, saith the Lord. Go look at any of the normie conformies and inferiors. They're in debt. They're fat. They have no good sex life. They're out of shape. They don't have fun. They don't go off the swinging rope. They're in more debt. <clears throat> Their love lives are either divorced or the miserable. They can't afford. They don't have any money for savings. They still keep beating the dead horse that they're, you know, imagine that girl says, this POC is going to be a boss bitch. Imagine what her career and life is going to be. Imagine what her love life is going to be. It's going to be non-existent. I mean, it'll be existent, but it'll be a miserable one. And so that will help you calm down is just looking at what uh, has become of these people's lives. I, I mean, it's, you can even start at, say, about age 25 when everyone gets out of college. You know, the artificial environment of school is finally over. And then here they are with $170,000 in debt for their master's in social work. And they're living at home and they can't find a job. If they do find a job, it's some, you know, part time because the market's flooded with social sociology majors or whatever. Um, <clears throat> rejoice in that. Rejoice. Enjoy that. That's not you. 
And you could start, that's the beginning. And that's all their life is for the rest of the life. And then they die. And then the final victory lap you get to do is your life didn't matter. Nerny, 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 nerny. You wasted your whole life. Ha, 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 ha. Well, you're out doing something of value, at least to yourself, right? So <clears throat> the meditation that comes through is one of the exercises I do is what's their life like? That helps. But here is about the, the, uh, well, maybe not the close, but at least a foot in the toe where you where you calm down. Maybe you listen to your wind chimes. Maybe you go for a long hike. Um, and I think also just taking time off, which pot calling kettle black. This is a I'm currently on this path. I didn't walk the path. I'm currently walking it. But I need to. I need there's there's nothing wrong taking a whole freaking day off and just doing nothing, engaging in a little vice. Relaxing, sleeping in, playing your video games. <clears throat> so letting letting your brain get over the war, essentially, and realize there is a new environment in front of you. There is a new life in your life. And, and the main reason you got to do that is because you do not want the remainder of your life to be as tortured in anger and in, in, uh, assailed and insult, assaulted as it was before. And so that takes a lot of sitting down. That takes a lot of relaxing. That takes a lot of, uh, of uh, ooh, forgive and let go. I, no, I don't believe in that. But I do. Th but what will get you over that is just look at them. Just look at these people. It's like, man, look at you. <laughs> Sucks to be you, man. <clears throat> Sucks to be you. And then, and then there's a smile on your face like, well, won that war. Won that war by leaving. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, something you can do, but you need to give your brain a rest after living in a toxic environment that entire time. You need to come down off of it and it's fine. So you gain 10, 15 pounds. I'm, I'm deadly serious. Take a year off, take a whole year off and just do whatever the hell you want. Again, pot calling the kettle black. So there's that. <clears throat> and meditation three, third thing of meditation, um, I am perfectly all right. Maybe this falls under treatment under meditation part two or vice is I think a certain amount of escapism is perfectly all right. The real world kind of sucks. And no matter how much you try to stoically remove yourself from it and you could insure yourself against it. Like I'm, I'm pretty insured. I, I don't care what happens. The electricity go out. I got electricity. I got solar panels and I got uh, some battery powered lights. And I, I don't really need to play television. I'm okay. I got guns. I got silver. I got food. I got bullets. Pop, pop. <clears throat> so I, I'm not worried. But you still kind of like, oh, oh, like, I don't know. You watch some news and it's just more people wanting more you to work more to pay for their mistakes. Boo hoo. Women majored in dumb crap. Now need more student loan bailout. Joey Biden going to print off more money. Bail out poor women. Boo hoo. You kind of like, you would. Oh. But it's okay to escape because your brain, whether it's an artificial or real environment, it is time existing. Your brain, <clears throat> whether it's real or not, the experience you have will be one of pleasure versus one of pain. And where this is identical to, but it's on the positive side, is when you're a stoic, there are bad things. Usually stoicism is in the contact. There are bad things outside of my control that are likely to happen or are going to happen. <clears throat> and the stoic says, well, don't worry about it because they're going to happen. Yeah, but it's going to hurt me. Yeah, it's going to hurt you no matter what. So do you want to have the added pain of worrying about it? When it comes to escapism, it, it's kind of the same thing. What kind of experience is your, what kind of uh during that time, up until the bad thing happens, what kind of environment and experience is your brain going to have? <clears throat> is it going to be relaxed and chilled out? Or is it going to be worried and angstful? And in, when it comes to escapism, it's kind of the same thing. But on the positive side, okay, is your brain going to be chilled out and relaxed? Or will it be, however synthetic or synthetically, 
being happy and joyful because either you had yourself a shot of booze, you're engaging in some kind of vice, or as it pertains to escapism, you're playing a video game. Y'all like movies, right? That's escapism. It's not real, but you enjoyed it. Jerking off the prawn. You may not, that's not real, but it's better than, you know, not having an orgasm. If, if you see the literal uh, utilitarian approach I'm taking there. <clears throat> daydreaming. Why did you daydream in school? Because school is a freaking prison and teachers are freaking morons. That's why you daydream so your brain can survive. Like, oh, wouldn't it be great to be a pirate on the seven seas? Reading comic books. You know, that is perfectly fine. Even I have, I have a comic book I'd like to write. Why do I want to write the comic book? Because it's going to sell and hopefully make a lot of money. Well, hopefully that's certainly an incentive. But the other thing is I can live vicariously through this character I have in mind in a very interesting world. I just don't have the time to write the damn thing. And I do have an artist who seems to be pretty darn reliable. Don't worry, Jay. I still I still know you're out there. <clears throat> um. So it, it it's now let's say that the comic book made no money. All right. Did I waste my time? No, because while I was live writing this character, doing a comic, let's say no one buys the comic book. I just, I got to live vicariously or at least hear a story through my own mind about a character who went through some interesting things. And that's better than being stuck in traffic or whatever it is you normally could for me people do uh, to avoid life. Or suffer in life. Um, religion also in the book. Some for you um, existentialists to chew on. Like you're going to die. And whether you believe in religion or you're agnostic or atheist. You do have to prepare your mind and your soul for the end. Like I don't know really how you prepare it. Like well you end. That's it. It's kind of well it'll happen. I try not to worry about it like a true stoic and coward would. <clears throat> but you may want to think, okay, well, when the end is coming, how do I prepare myself? It's the last few days. How do I face death? Everyone has to face it. Maybe religion isn't the worst thing for you to entertain. And so that's something for people to chew on, regardless of what your religious or absent of religious beliefs are. And then finally, a couple things. Charity. You say, Aaron, aren't you against charity? Yes, I'm absolutely against charity. Charity doesn't solve anything. It makes the problems worse and it enables stupid people to continue making stupid choices. And you're just enslaving yourself to the lazy and parasitic among society. <clears throat> but what I mean through charity is specifically guiding younger people to have an easier life than you did. That's what I mean by charity. So maybe mentoring. I, of course, charge for my mentoring because I am a greedy pig. Uh... But if I had a mentor or a younger person under me, you know, I, I have no problem helping them out, especially if they want to make the right choices. Um, and that that is kind of it's not that you're doing it for a legacy reason, but it's ultimately much more productive and meaningful in life because all all we have is time. The question is, how much are you going to piss away make it rating system? And if you get people unplugged from the matrix and give them a more accurate operating system, one that will make their choices in life more profitable, <clears throat> a higher rate of return on, on their investment, not necessarily financial, but whatever, you will spare them the mistakes and thus the pains you made making their lives easier. And so I'm, this is why I, I'm all for warning young people about worthless degrees. I'm all for telling people about minimalism. I also found out when you warn people about worthless degrees and tell them about minimalism, nobody listens to you. Matter of fact, uh, particularly ladies will call you a sexist if you tell them, hey, you really shouldn't major in journalism. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you're paying for it. And usually people pay attention then because of, was it the Faustian? It wasn't Faust, was it Freud? Some F guy. No one values anything unless they pay a price for it. So there you go. Um, so I, I do charge. Sometimes I charge a lot. But if I get a young person like, dude, I, what do I do? I'll do whatever. Okay, first lose weight. That's that's like the first you think, oh, you're really hard on fat people. <clears throat> no, no, I'm not. That's the first step. Okay, you're fat. It's gross. It's disgusting. It's killing your love life. It's ending your life early. Are you going to get rid of it? And that's the first step. Will you lose weight? You will? Cool. All right. You're serious. You won't? Then don't even talk to me. 
Enjoy your fat, disgusting, pathetic life. Your, your truly worthless, pointless life. Go go enjoy it. Because you're, you're going to be lazy on your own damn health. And you're okay with diabetes. Well, then you're, you're going to be lazy on everything else. So I'm all for helping out those who deserve it. And making sure they avoid the pain and agony that you guys went through. And that gives you point and purpose. It may even give you someone to talk to a little bit. But it is exceptionally rare, especially a younger person that's going to shut the F up about how they know everything about socialism. We just need more of other people's money. And yes, it is that pathetic and sad. They say, wait a minute. Oh, that's it. Me and Jack Napier talk about Russell Brand. Speaking of, and he's not even young. Now he's a libertarian. Like what, Russell? Did you look at your taxes finally? for Yo, you're starting to get gray pubes. You finally figured this out, huh? Like, I wouldn't help out. I wouldn't piss on Russell Brand until he finally figured it out. Now he has. Now I'd be more than happy to explain economics to him. Of course, he's, I'm, I'm a, a nobody compared to him. But, you know, try to get, try to get some, trying to get him at whatever age or 35. Yeah, man. <laughs> this is the system and the corporations, man. Zip piss. <clears throat> so wait for those that have ears. Um, another thing, this would fall under vice, but I think it should be its own category. Sex, and this is for men only. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here, oh, sit down. He's he's laying down truth bombs. You girls just don't like sex as much as men. I'm finding this out. I had two clients. I, I, we all knew girls didn't like sex as much as men did. Shh, shh. No, yeah, they do, just not with you. Shh, we, they don't like sex as much as men. Otherwise, there wouldn't be prostitution. There's your truth bomb. And if you don't believe me, just go ask any girl, hey, you want to have sex and, and see how many times you get shot down? <laughs> with girls you want to have sex with. You, you'll find out. You'll find it's not a secret. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm sorry. I know. And I know. And, and you know what? For those ladies of you, the small percentage that really like sex, or for nearly all you girls that like sex with hotter men, I know the the, the preferences are skewed. You would want to have sex. Well, you won't have sex with the average guy, either average six, seven, or eight, but you would have 10, you would have sex with a Chippendale. I'll give you the same. So this would apply to you, the small fraction of ladies that would that would fall into this. <clears throat> Men, sex is enjoyable. It's the number one thing most of us enjoy. Um, some men don't like sex that much. It goes down as you get older. Just pay for it. Absolutely just pay for it. Uh the time, money, uh, and searching costs to find a girl to convince her to have sex. You could do it. Absolutely. It happens. Uh, it's a horrendous waste of time, money, effort, and resources. And if you're older and you just don't have the time and, uh, and okay, let's also say you're fat and ugly. You're not physically attractive, man, or not attractive enough, which is your five, sixes, and sevens. Just go pay for it. Just go pay for it. All right. Uh, this obviously falls under the vice, but life is too short to be struggling and striving and like, oh, let me go on 10 dates and learn how to be as charming as Cary Grant for you to give me begrudgingly regrettable sex. No, go down to Pahrump, go down to Vegas, go down to Reno, go to Amsterdam, go wherever else it is. I'm not saying make this your entire life either. Um, go to the seeking arrangement and just pay and be done with it and enjoy the sex. Right, you're going to be happier. <clears throat> I don't think it's really going to be necessarily more fulfilling, but you have a good time. That need will be taken care of, and it, and it's just done, just done. Uh, ladies, same thing for you. If you want to get a gigolo, go ahead. Um, or um, and more. Let's let's also talk about the, the non-sex aspect of prostitution. The um, <clears throat> talk to a couple gals who I know. This may, sit down, shock everyone. Sometimes girls who work as po cocktail waitresses also double as escorts. Can you believe it? And I've actually befriended a couple of these gals, although they never stay at the same. Then also they're gone working somewhere else. Uh, I'm talking as a, as wait staff, but they're like, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's the girlfriend experience. That's the number one thing. Guys don't even necessarily pay for the sex. They just pay for a girl to treat them nice. <laughs> That's really what it is. And girls, a lot of you maybe just want to show up with a good looking guy on your arm. You don't even want the sex. Maybe it's more status. Pay for it. Are you having fun? Are you enjoying it? Then pay for it. 
you know, especially if you're a minimalist, you got your financial act together, you're probably going to, your money's going to outlast you. I don't know what else you're going to do with your money. And if the opposite sexes have become so stingy with their love, affection, intention, and company with one another, that now they got to pay for it, fine, pay for it. All right. And, you know, I, I know a couple guys, more than one. Uh, they're elder, not old, but elder, older than me. And they just, no, that's, that's my girl. And you look at him like, there's no way. And like, oh yeah, no, he's paying for that. But you know what? He's got a smile on his face and here's a pretty girl next to him. And yeah, that guy's got the money to afford it <laughs> every week, every week. <laughs> and so uh, I know sex is, doesn't play that big of a role in women's happiness or joy. Uh, but for men, it does. And so for men, absolutely pay for it. Absolutely. <clears throat> Good food uh, depends on your budget and depends on where you are. Obviously, in Rapid City, there's not fine dining. There's some places that are better than average, and I'll go and I'll get some good food. But uh, I think good food, one of the tastes, again, falls under vice, but one thing I would really focus on is getting a good meal. And I'm not talking high dining. I, I oh my goodness, you know, where they serve you a little thing with a little drizzle on and they charge you 800 bucks. No, no. You find a good steakhouse. You find a good barbecue joint. You find a good restaurant that just serves good food. Alvaro, St. George, Utah, best Mexican food ever. You go get some good food, right? And you enjoy it. And how do you enjoy it, boys and girls? Just like every other vice, guilt free. And then finally, what I've taken joy and happiness in is I really like ice cream and sweets and pastries, desserts. Again, falls under vice, but I <clears throat> I just, I didn't, you know, I gave up booze and uh, I'm like, well, maybe I'll treat it, you know, substitute it out. I don't go, I don't go crazy with the sweets every day, but there was a while, especially when I was putting in retaining walls and doing physical labor. I'm like, yeah, Cappy's getting an ice, daddy's getting an ice cream. Daddy, sometimes daddy go get a crumble cookie and a cupcake. Sometimes. And so, uh, and of course, guilt-free, but you know, you're working in 90 degree weather, bringing up, you know, uh, uh, bricks. <laughs> it's pretty easy to go guilt-free. Even lost weight. I was like, I came out here. I was about a buck fifty, <clears throat> buck fifty-seven. I'm down to a buck forty. I'm down seventeen pounds. That included eating all those pastries and sweets. So can't be getting thin again. Abs still ain't showing, damn it. But uh, yeah, I would absolutely. And here's here's another thing to view sweets and vice in general. One of the main reasons you're going to avoid vices, particularly as it pertains to food and sweets, is that if you get fat, you no longer be physically attractive for the opposite sex. Dude, we're not only talking about the absence of the opposite sex. We're talking the absence of other people. And so <clears throat> kind of almost imagine this. You're this. Uh, and there was a guy like this who built his own cabin in the middle of nowhere, Alaska. And all he did was read his books and he had a, he split firewood and he got food and he just lived this very simple and basic and stoic life. Do you think he cared what he ate? Like if he had the ice cream, he have the ice cream. If there are no people, there is no one to judge. And therefore there is no guilt with whatever vice, be it <clears throat> hardcore drugs, paying for sex or having yourself a double scoop of ice cream with, with sprinkles and chocolate syrup on top. Which, by the way, ice cream doesn't exist until you put chocolate syrup on top. Right? That's not ice cream. You need to put Hershey's chocolate syrup on top. Preferably special dark. Um, but if there's no one around, there is no society by which to uh, get their approval. Yeah, you could be fat and disgusting. You shouldn't because of your own health reasons. But so you get the ice cream. So you got a little bit of a paunch. There ain't no girl there. There ain't no guy there. So you could kind of have a body that doesn't look the best naked, but if you got good heart health, you're getting some exercise and you're extending your life to the maximum extent possible, you don't have to be physically attractive to the opposite sex. So to further <clears throat> eliminate, destroy, blow away, and eradicate that guilt, consider that. 
if there's, if your premise is there ain't anybody in my life or nobody, like there's always going to be someone in your life, but not in a romantic or even a, a social aspect, really just a transactional, I need to get gas from the gas station attendant type of thing. Their opinion of you doesn't matter. And on top of it, let's say you are in society. Most people's opinion doesn't matter anyway, because they're truly stupid, inferior, worthless people. Oftentimes evil and parasitic. <clears throat> So, uh, so there you go. There's, uh, reasons to live beyond what's listed in the menu. Uh, that, that was pretty good. Uh, good question there, buddy. We got almost 500 people tuning in. If you guys would kindly subscribe to the channel, uh, that will get me closer to a hundred thousand, in which case I went a proud plastic thing. This is 95 degrees out already. <sighs> uh, and if you guys were interested here. If you got your financial troubles, minimalism courses below, 450 bucks plus tax. It's linked down below. Sign up for it now. Don't sign up for the school. You got to sign up for the school and then choose which course you want. I get a notification when you sign up for the school. You don't get access to the class. That just gives you a username and password to take other classes that you inevitably have to pay. Take the class. There's also another class called Achieving Financial Excellence that's also offered through Teachable. Do the minimalism thing, get it done. That'll give you something to do is to master minimalism. All right. That'll that'll get it there. All right. The book, the menu. If you're looking for a menu of things to do, uh, because <laughs> I it's written for both men and women. There is a women's menu in there, like without guys, what do you do? But let's be honest, it's you girls leaving the marriage market and the dating market. So girls don't want to have anything with you guys. Figure it out. What do I do there? There's the book. It's topical, it's deep, it's philo philosophical. <clears throat> and then the Way of Monkey book, Turd Flinging Monkey's book. I'll link to that below. I should really do that later. But search it's available on Amazon. And that's it. Let's go through the super chats, the super chats, the super chats. Let's go through the super chats and have ourselves a treat. I'm coming up on, I think, day seven of no carbs, which is then cheat day. I remember my grandpa. You guys want to say story time with Uncle Cappy? You want story time with Uncle Cappy? My grandpa was an incredibly handsome man. And you don't know that. You're a kid. Yeah, it's just grandpa. He's the one that gets you chocolate ice cream and you love him to death. And he's the world's greatest man. He's he's and he's a poorly disguised angel. And uh, we didn't know that, but he was a good looking dude. He was a real good looking dude. He had that smirk on his face. And he is a bit of a naughty fellow. He's the exact type of girl, a guy that girls loved. And he got divorced. And we never understood why all these old grandma ladies in town were always bringing him food. And, you know, they really homemade food. We, I remember we'd sit down and he'd, he'd make us food. Uh, he always loved steak because he survived Iwo Jima. Uh, yeah, Iwo Jima. And he says, I'm never suffering bad food again. Yeah, that was his promise to himself. So we always, we always would have steak with grandpa. It was great. But we have all the other fixings were bought by Ethel Baby and Irma Baby. He called them Baby at the end. Oh, yeah, Irma Baby and Ethel Baby and Lois Baby. This is a small town, middle of the freaking prairie in nowhere, Minnesota. Where are all these women coming from? Oh, they wanted my grandpa's dick so bad. Oh, did they want his dick so bad? And they were nice. And the way to a man's heart was through his stomach. And every gal tried. But he went through one marriage with my grandma. He was like, nope. Original MGTOW. Nope. I'm out of here. Nope. He'd take the food. Thank you very much. And oh, just a great man. Uh, hat and clocks, two bucks. Give Cappy money. That's what you do. No, money is money. Look, if you haven't figured it out that we spend 50 trillion on poor people and children and we still have poor people and, and everything's worse. It's not money. It's letting them starve and letting them figure it out on their own. But Cappy, what if they die? You'd be amazed what work ethic you will develop if you're starving to death and actually facing death. You might go work fast food and show up on time. <clears throat> I mean, girls, this, this is how powerful starvation is. Girls may not even, they will not major in dumb crap. The power of starvation is so powerful. It, it will convince women to major in engineering. That's how powerful it is. What? Really? Yes. Yes. Did you know, Matt? Five, uh, two Canadian bucks. Any new insights since your scare last year? Now, really, I kind of knew that it wasn't... Um, 
the only one was to get right with your mortality and your finiteness. Because I'm increasingly uh, atheist. I just don't see it. Um, and everyone who's religious, when you get there, they're all dicks. They're power-hungry dicks. I'm like, God is not here. Maybe the Jews, maybe I join them because they've been the least dickish to me. And by the way, it's not because they know I'm a quarter Jew. Like just in general conversation, the Jews have treated me the nicest. <clears throat> then you find that, you know, then they find out you're, oh, you're one of us. No, I'm not really. <laughs> Come on in. Come on. I appreciate it. Have some bagel and locks. That is good. Tempting. Won't convince me your Yahweh is the guy. Uh, so, uh, no, but it just, it made me love my nieces more. It made me more and like adamant about going and having fun. Bought my girlfriend more lingerie and, uh, you know, did, did a lot of other things. Not nothing like, you know, more trips, more motorcycles. Like go, go, go more ice cream. Um, but yeah, I just proved I, and it, it did make me proud of all the accomplishments I had. Like, well, if I got to go at 45, I'll go at 45. Angela Anim, $10. I left to study in Ashton around 2015. When I returned in 2020, I was confused and honestly still am. I did not know everyone was mentally ill and hated each other. I'm ready to leave again. Yeah. Uh, Roosh had the same thing when he traveled. You you go away and you come back and nothing nothing changed, but your perspective, you're like, wow, you people are mentally ill. Angela, think about this. Like Overseas, you're not supposed to be fat. You're just not. And you'd go around, you see thin, normal, healthy people. You'd see feminine women wearing feminine garb. You come back to the United States, people are mutilating their bodies, tattooing their faces, and just getting disgusting and fat. Um, <clears throat> it is mentally ill here. It is. And and I'll tell you this, this is not an opinion. You should be right. It, almost anyone who is not mentally ill should at least come up with a plan and follow some of this philosophy I've talked about so that you seclude yourself from the rest of people just so you maintain your mental health like i i guess i guess men are breaking under the pressure and they're starting to date fat chicks on dating apps there's a friend of a friend runs a dating app and this friend told me that his friend told him that uh <clears throat> men are just okay fine i'll go out with a fat chick okay guys i i don't know there's some pretty good porn out there <laughs> hey I, I, I know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's becoming, it's becoming a, a mental asylum. Pulse kebab, two bucks. Uh, Cappy, why do you hate Minnesota so much? Go live there and find out. I even have videos on why I hate Minnesota. <clears throat> Short version. It is a group of people whose primary virtue is hating themselves. Unless you're uh, an immigrant or a minority. It is white people whose only virtue is to hate themselves to the point they will, they will gladly give a welfare collecting bum. Well, uh, no, well, welfare too, but they'll give, uh, someone who's not a native Minnesotan, uh, scholarships, money, free thing, and they'll make their children pay for it. Um, they're also, then the second reason is they are incredibly elitist, uh, nepotistic and snobby. And they're backstabbing, passive-aggressive hypocrites. They will be nice to your face, but the, the a very close second to themselves that they hate is you. They are a vile people, a vile, hypocritical, cowardly people. And you're just, it's good because they keep it together. They have to be vain. They have to keep, so the economy is actually pretty darn good. But they're, the people are not, you, they're not lovable. You cannot love these people. They're not human. Um, and so it's, it's a great place to go and maybe get some experience. Working at a fortune, they got a lot of fortune 500 companies out there. Once you got that experience, get the hell out. And anywhere, literally anywhere, New York, at least there's a, hey, man, what's going on? Bibbidi bobbidi. Um, the Southern ding, 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 any, any other place, but those people. Bob, five bucks. I'm in a stage of my life that I only know what I don't want in life. That's a start. That's a huge start, man. That's huge. I'm working it up. 
process to not need a job as the only source of income. Well, you you are more than halfway there. More than halfway there. That's great. Most people don't even do that. Most people die in debt. They're called boomers. <laughs> oh. Uh Alan Beeblebox, ten about a dollar. You don't support because your gloomy life outlook is up. It's not gloomy. It's not. It is what it is. If anything, it's a light of hope. Look, your other option was to stick with these these normie conformity inferior idiots. What would you have done? You wouldn't have gone off the swinging rope. You would have majored in dumb crap. You would have gone into debt. You would have majored in overweight spouse. You would have been miserable. You would have had a crappy sex life. You would have gotten divorced. Your children would have hated you. Your children would have been on drugs or diseases they don't have. And then you'd have to work more. You'd be a financial slave. And old to what? What? What would be your peak that you you're you get to take your your truck or your Audi uh, Audi A10 and impress people and go to the the Christmas party. Yes, you're not you're not missing anything. All I did was point out how truly worthless, pathetic, debauch, sometimes evil, but evil requires intelligence. And most of these people are fat, disgusting. Sad, pathetic, useless, worthless human being society has become. I'm saying there's nothing there. It is a sad statement that such a high percentage of Western population, especially the United States, is so bad that the individual is right to go out on his or her own and just be left alone. I mean, history podcasts, what people did in the past is more intellectually stimulating than the average person out there. Not kidding. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Lay it right down for you, MRFers. This podcast, oh, Cappy with his negativity, blah, 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 is the most intelligent thing you're going to hear all week. It'll be the most mentally stimulating thing. And you know what? Let's make it a challenge. You post this on social media. You say, here's the challenge. You listen to this, the whole thing. Tell me if it's not the most interesting, uh, not necessarily intellectual, but interesting thing you've heard all week. Because I guarantee you for 95% of the Americans out there, it is. Because what's what is it? OMG, Cardi B said the goobly bloobity loo against Dr. Dre, who did the bobbity bobbity bop, and it's on lifestyle.net or whatever the TikTok slop is, or whatever. I mean, really. What? Oh no, Biden said a stupid thing. Fox News alert, which was the same Fox News alert that we did five minutes ago on the Fox News alert. Hey, then did you know? Cooper Anderson is Anderson Cooper is still like advocating taking other people's crap money. I mean, not taking guff from them, taking their money and giving it real. Wow. Anderson. Holy cow. Still got that white hair, huh? Hey guys, the young Turks said the exact same thing, but in today's modern context with today's news, give us more of other people's money. Oh, Hollywood came out with another remake, a woke leftist piece of trash. <clears throat> I'm it's uplifting because I'm giving you my like, here you go. Cause the only here's here's the out. Here's the goal. Here's the light. The light is we're gonna die. All of us. And you wanna be one of these. It's gonna be the worst part of their life. I wasted it. You'd be like, nope, I didn't waste it. I paid for fifty hundred whores. I lived, I lived in Pahrump for the sole reason of getting whores. I eat good food. I had fun. I had guilt-free ice cream. I had a ton of girls. And I rode my motorcycle and I went swimming. And it was just nothing but a 50-year-long summer vacation with a credit card and lots of sex. Oh, no. You know, not that. Who won? We did. I'm telling you how to win. If at any point, ladies, you want to join this fun and, and actually start giving up the sex and we don't have to pay, I understand you got to make ends meet. I love it. We're so equal. We're just like men. Want to have sex? Okay, never mind. Channel 1800, dumb. Five bucks. Just saying hi, Cap. Late to the press. That's all right. What time is it? Oh, it's pretty late, isn't it? 
been a little late over there in New Zealand. <clears throat> and as always say, hello to your redheaded sister. I hope she's doing well. Hey, could you do me a favor? Email me at Cappy Cap. And just send me a couple pictures of you and your sister over in New Zealand. I just like to see because you're a regular. All I got, we just got your thing there. You know, I don't know. Pick if you guys got a dog or, you know, hey, this is us with our family, you know. This is us in a kayak, you know, just kind of face with the story. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep those. I was going to do a podcast today. But I think this is going to be the podcast. I think I'm going to upload. This is the official Good Morning Chan Corona Chan podcast. <clears throat> Eighteen hundred dumb again. Five New Zealand bucks. I've seen Aaron offer certain young men financial help in the past. It's rare, exceptionally rare. Like if you guys look at a donate. Okay, you guys want charity? You want a real charity where you donate money? Thor and Missy, go fund me. Search right now, Thor, Missy, GoFundMe. They got medical bills. Missy got in a horrible accident. She was paralyzed from the neck down by a miracle of God. She's barely walking again. She's got to learn it all over. And obviously, they have incurred a ton of medical expenses, right? And they did have insurance, but it went beyond that. So if you want to donate money, donate to Thor and Missy. You can just Google search it, Thor and Missy, GoFundMe. And you'll see Thor because he, he looks... He looks like a dwarf from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I hope he sees this. <laughs> You're like, hey, that's a dwarf from the Lord of the Rings. Yep, that's Thor. <laughs> Red Pill Thor, he's got a channel too. You can find him on YouTube. <clears throat> uh, Cappy's too demure and humble. I'll blow his trumpet, but nothing else. Uh, it, I, I donated Thor and Missy. I sent Kevin Savo some money because he's going to actually make a movie with it to make some film. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've donated. Oh, there was the, apparently, I think I was drunk when I did it. Um, a family, the they got their Christmas toys stolen. The girl, single mom, of course, didn't have the money. Now, this was not for the single mom. She didn't have the money to get new gifts. And she had bought her daughter a Barbie doll set. And I'm like, all right. And so I, I was like, maybe I looked it up later. I'm like, I was like 50 bucks. And um, so I bought that. But that's for the kid. The kids are innocent. Look, you could be, look, you could be charitable Nicholas Wolfwood style. All right. That's all right. But you ne don't give adults money. Never give adults money. Screw them. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Was there more? Oh, yeah. Now the YouTube. <clears throat> wow, a lot of comments. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Da, 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 da. Here we go. 1800 dumb again. Uh, two bucks. Story time, Cappy. Can we sit on your knee? No. Your sister can. I don't know. Sister may not even be cute. Michael Miguel Anderson, 20 Mexican pesos. Thanks for the help from Mexico, Cappy. Yeah, no problem, Michael. <clears throat> Or Mexico must be must be hot. I got you guys. Is it hot down there? Uh, John McCallion, five bucks. Took your advice and visited St. George Grand Junction and Moab on my way to Colorado. Beautiful areas. Driving on the 15 and 70 during rain sucks. Yes, it does. But at least you got to see some of the most beautiful parts of the country. Utah is the prettiest. I, it's con contiguous United States. Alaska is prettier than that. But that's it. Goth Rocker, ten bucks. Cappy. Minnesota people sound like Pennsylvania people. I'm trying. I. Look, Pennsylvania people actually have blue collar workers in the coal mines. Minnesota is just, it's Pennsylvania voted Republican a couple times too. Minnesota is a bunch of the self aggrandizing, worthless, parasitic people. I, I can't describe it. And it's way colder than Pennsylvania, way colder. Thoughts on the state of Tennessee? Seems like there's a lot of flooding there all the time. Well, don't live by a river then. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I like Tennessee. It's warmer, no state income taxes, beautiful hiking, beautiful motorcycle riding. Yeah, Tennessee, hell yeah. Channel 1800, dumb, 20 New Zealand. Thanks, man. A lot of money. Most people are not nice. The sphere is filled with many empaths who see this. Small circles, best rewards in life. This includes Aaron, Polska, Bob, and many others. Indifference out in society, though. You bless you, Cappy. Yeah, who's yeah? God? Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Channel 1800, dumb. Um, 
yeah, I just don't even bother. Look, you want you want society go to Walmart. There's society. You want to take a pulse on the finger of society? Go to Walmart. There you go. There's society. We all caught up. I think we're all caught up. That's it. There you go. All right. Links to the book and the thing down below. <clears throat> uh, minimalism course. Search it through the Clary School of Economic Philosophy on Teachable. The menu. Life without the opposite sex. Ton of things that go into great much more detail about topics that I did not cover today. Uh, so if you're looking for some kind of things to do outside of society or outside of marriage, there you go. And then The Way of Monkey book by Turd Flingy Monkey. You can find that on Amazon.com. And then another one. I think that was it. Oh, if you want it also through Teachable, Clary School of Economic Philosophy, Achieving Financial Excellence. That's only 99 bucks. That's a little bit more um, <clears throat> hands-on how to get your finances together. That's about it. All right, see you guys later. Toodles.